Welcome to Biology 2160 for the lab. We're going to focus on the head and neck muscles in this walkthrough tutorial. First, I want to note that on our model, we have a superficial side and we also have a deeper side. On the superficial side, you'll note the frontalis muscle. It is over top of the frontal bone. This muscle allows you to raise your eyebrows. It is attached to a connective tissue that covers over top of the scalp called the gallia aponeurotica. It extends all the way to the posterior part of the scalp where the occipitalis is located. And this is a muscle over top of the occipital bone. When this muscle contracts, it pulls tight on the gallia aponeurotica and allows for the frontalis to contract and raise the eyebrows. Together, these structures are often called the occipitofrontalis. We have a couple of sphincters. First one is the orbicularis oculi. This is a true sphincter in which the muscle totally circles the eye. This is involved in closing the eye. The other sphincter is the orbicularis oris. It surrounds the mouth, but it's not a true sphincter. Instead, this muscle is made up of four quadrants. This allows for you to purse your lips protrude them forward, and in kissing. A couple of muscles raise the lips. The levator labii superioris. The words are telling you what it does. Levator, elevator, an elevator lifts you up. This is going to lift the labii. Labii is lips in Latin, and so it's on the superior side of the mouth and it's intended to lift the lips. So this muscle will raise the lips as in sneering. On the deeper side, the levator anguli oris will also raise the corner of the mouth as in smiling. The zygomaticus muscles, zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major, both of these are attached to the zygomatic bone. Both of these are going to attach to the dermis near the mouth to allow for um, smiling. So the zygomaticus minor also will work in sneering, just like the levator labii superioris, and will assist in smiling. And the zygomaticus major is connected here at the corner or the angle of the mouth at the modiolus and pull the corners of the mouth outward. People who have dimples have a shorter zygomaticus major muscle. And so that causes the skin to dimple. Another muscle that moves the corner of the mouth outward is the rosorius. The rosorius connects here at the modiolus and pulls the mouth straight laterally. Some muscles function in depressing the lips or pulling the mouth downward. The depressor anguli oris functions in pulling the corners of the mouth down as in pouting or frowning. The depressor labii inferioris is a muscle that pulls down the lips at the bottom side of the mouth or the lower side of the mouth. So as in showing your bottom teeth. The mentalis muscles also function in pouting, so they'll pull the lower lip down.
The buccinator muscle here is shown on the deep side, but you can also see it a little bit on the superficial side. This muscle is very important, especially in a newborn. Newborns need to suckle within a few hours after birth. They are going to need to latch onto the breast or a bottle for nutrients. And so this muscle needs to be developed in that process. It's also involved in chewing and swallowing, sucking, blowing. So if you do fishy lips, you are using that muscle. Another muscle involved in chewing or moving of the mandible is the temporalis muscle. This is attached to the temporal lines, which span over the frontal and parietal bones and even the temporal bone. The temporalis muscle makes its connection on the mandible at the coronoid process. It elevates the jaw as in lifting your mouth closed to chew. This also allows for excursion, which means that you're shifting your mandible from side to side. One of the strongest muscles of the body, given its size or relative to its size, is the masseter muscle. Think mastication. The masseter muscle is attached to the body of the mandible posteriorly and it goes all the way to the angle. Comes up the ramus and attaches to the zygomatic bone. This is a very powerful muscle involved in chewing. It raises the mandible. Other muscles that are involved in chewing, swallowing, manipulating the jaw, and vocalization are the hyoid muscles. You've got two groups, the suprahyoid group and the infrahyoid group. Most of these are gonna tell you something about the muscle. The first one we'll look at is the digastric. Di means two. It has two bellies, gastric. It's attached at the mastoid process comes down to the hyoid bone, enters through a little ligament, a loop of cartilage, and then passes back through to attach to the underside of the mandible. So this is the posterior belly, this is the anterior belly. When this muscle contracts, it shortens and it pulls the mandible down, opening the mouth. Another muscle of similar function is the geniohyoid. This muscle is attached to the hyoid and the chin. Genio means chin. When this muscle contracts and shortens, it lowers the mandible and opens the mouth. This is the stylohyoid. It's attached to the styloid process of the temporal bone and to the hyoid bone. It elevates or raises the hyoid bone after it has been lowered. And finally, there's a muscle that spans the floor of the mouth, and it is the bilohyoid. It's attached to the hyoid bone and the underside of the mandible all the way back to the molar teeth. Milo means molar teeth. This elevates the floor of the mouth when swallowing. The infrahyoid group also acts on the hyoid bone to move other structures. The omohyoid has two bellies as well, superior and inferior, and omo means shoulder. So this attaches to the shoulder. This is going to pull the hyoid bone down after it's been elevated. 
The sternohyoid is attached to the sternum and the hyoid and has the same function as the omohyoid. It lowers the hyoid after it's been elevated. Two deeper muscles, sternothyroid and thyrohyoid, both act on the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. The sternothyroid is attached to the sternum and the thyroid cartilage, and it lowers or draws down the thyroid cartilage of the larynx when you are singing low notes. The thyrohyoid is attached to the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone, and it raises the thyroid cartilage of the larynx, as in singing high notes. Both of these are involved in chewing and swallowing, manipulating the larynx when food is moving or passing down through the esophagus. Now let's look at the neck muscles. One of the most obvious neck muscles is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This has three points of attachment. The mastoid process of the temporal bone, the sternum, and the clavicle. This muscle functions in rotation of the head. It also functions bilaterally when you are looking down, as in reading or writing. It also functions in lateral flexion of the head, tilting your head from one side to the other. The scalenes, that means stairs or steps. You have an anterior, a middle, and a posterior scalene muscle. These are attached to ribs one through two. Rib number one is attached to the anterior. Rib number one also attaches at the middle. And rib number two is attached to the posterior. These also function in bilateral flexion of the neck, as in looking down, reading to write. And they're also involved in lateral flexion of the neck. And they're important in inspiration. As you breathe in, they elevate ribs one and two. If we continue to move around the posterior side, we're gonna see some extensors of the head. These allow for your head to be upright. The trapezius. This attaches to the cap or the skull. It spans out to the shoulder and about midway down the vertebral column. This keeps your head erect. Splenius capitis also keeps your head erect. Splenius means bandage. This muscle is pretty much the same width the whole way until it attaches to the vertebral column. Capitis, it's attached at the cap. One more muscle involved in extension of the neck is the semispinalis capitis. So it's attached at the cap, and then it's attached part way down the vertebral column. All of these three muscles are involved in extension of the head. They're also involved in hyperextension. One muscle that is on our list that is not really a factor in moving the head so much as moving the scapulae. That is the levator scapulae. So scapulae is plural for scapula, which is one. So we're looking at the levator scapula. This elevates or raises the scapula.